class. Hi there, welcome everybody. This is Beth Caldwell and I'm here for Success Circle. Tonight is a repeat of our first class in Success Circle due to technical difficulties. So this evening we are going to talk about the five most important systems for your business. Now I sent you a recording, an audio recording on this topic where you can listen to me talk for one hour about these systems. So for this group only, because I want you to have a great recording and I do want you to have this information, I'm going to uh, allow you to listen to that audio recording which talks about the systems. And today I'm going to tell you those systems, but I'm also going to do some troubleshooting and some brainstorming with you this evening on these topics too, which is not what I do in the public class. And, you know, this weekend I had two events that I went to and a number of other emails and pitches that I received and they made me think about people's systems and why systems don't work. So I'll share those with you later at the appropriate times that really inspired me to talk with you a little bit differently this evening. Now, tonight, as you know, we are going to talk about the five most important systems uh, for your business. If you have questions, I see people are popping on now that we've started. If you have questions for me that you want me to specifically address, you can either uh, pop them into the chat box over here on the right of your screen, or at the lower part of your screen, you should see a little, it looks like a file box with a Q on it. You can type questions in there. And so if you have anything specific that you'd like me to address, this is why we're here. You're getting me in a small group so that I can really um, be your group consultant. And when we do these webinars, you can come early, ask your specific questions, and, and I'll answer them for you. I love doing that. I love brainstorming with you, and I love having you, helping you to navigate through this whole abundance business um, journey that we're all on. So here's what's not included in our workshop tonight. Tonight I'm not going to talk about systems for organizing your files. I'm not going to talk about systems for hiring people, systems for interviewing team members. I'm not going to talk to you about systems for training your staff. I'm not going to talk about filing or cleaning or systems for updating your website or for putting together an email marketing campaign or for anything else that that you do on a daily basis that is a routine those are important systems but the reason I'm I picked these five is because all these other things that I've mentioned, the cleaning, the organizing, I mean, oh my goodness, there's a system for keeping your car maintained. There's a system for cooking and cleaning and shopping. And all of those systems are important and they can help you to live life with more joy, but they don't instantly make you money. And so the five systems that I picked tonight are the ones that you need in place for you to make immediate money and keep your money. And that is a part of abundance. Abundance isn't just about being, oh, you know, oh, I'm at peace. I mean, that's, it's really nice when you have money because you can be at more peace. Um, it's also nice when your house is clean and when your team is well-trained. Those are all important things to have. The ones we're talking about tonight are the ones that are going to make you immediate money. And at the end of the call tonight, I want you to ask yourself this question. One question I want you to ask yourself at the end of the evening. What one system are you going to either implement or improve after listening to this information? So I'm going to talk to you about five systems, plus I'm going to give you a lot more content of what was going around in my brain over the weekend. And I don't want you to become overwhelmed because it's not possible for us as a team of one or as a small team, some of you have teams of less than 10, it's not possible for us to create, implement, improve, and automate five systems at the same time. 
So one thing at a time. So which one will you either implement or improve? Now, some of you on the call are brand new in your business and you have no systems yet. So you'll be starting from zero. So which one are you going to begin with first? Some of you on this call in this success circle are very seasoned professionals. You may have all five of these systems up, running, automated, and working well, and maybe a lot more be besides that. But which one are you going to work on improving this week? And then what are you going to do with the rest of them? Let's put those in your calendar in June, July, August, September to implement and improve and get some of these other systems automated. So no overwhelm. Don't try to do everything at the same time. And pick one to work on. And I would say probably a good, a good policy or a good strategy for you would be to pick one system to either implement or improve right now, and then pick three to work on in the next six months, okay? So, so there we go. Again, if you have any questions, let me check over here. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking and what are you thinking um, since we talked last week about speaking? I'd really love to know, so go ahead and type that stuff in there. Now, I want to talk to you about how do you create systems before we get into the, the meat of this topic tonight. How do you create systems? Think about it. Think about everything that you do from the time you get up in the morning until you are working with your clients and all in between before and after. There are a lot of things that you do, whether you have a name for it or a list for it or a routine for it or not, you have a lot of systems that you're already doing. And um, there are a lot of you who have no systems and no structure. A lot of times uh, women like me who are very creative, who are very entrepreneurial, we sort of resist systems and we resist discipline because we think that um, we find it rigid or we don't care for structure. And I have to tell you that I love freedom and independence, but structure and systems can really give that to you, really can make you leverage yourself, okay? But how do you create a system for life? Let's say you're starting a brand new system today. You hear this information tonight, and you're going to start a brand new system, or you're going to completely improve a system. So let me give you the seven ways that you do that. And I'll also email this to you later so that you don't, you'll have it in one place that you can copy and paste. So first thing you're going to do is create your system. Take a look at how you've been doing things now, or how you would like to do things now and write it down. If you're fortunate enough to have a team of support people, then have a group meeting. You don't have to go away in a retreat. You don't have to take block off three hours. You can talk about this in 10 or 15 minutes. Um, let's make a list of how we would really like this system to work. So create it. The second thing you have to do is implement it. You know, I teach two uh, intensive workshops about systems. One of them is how to create a marketing plan for your business. And one of them is how to create a complete publicity plan for your business. And then last fall, I taught a really nice two and a half hour workshop on using Pinterest for your business. And I went through, in all three of those workshops, I go through a step-by-step -step system that you need to have success in any of those areas. And, oh, I've been teaching, other than that Pinterest class, I've been teaching the other two for years and years and years. So I've had hundreds of people come through those workshops. And what's interesting is that just a little more than half of those people make a really nice system on paper. They get it organized, they get it structured, they have it exactly the way it's supposed to be, but they skip step number two. And guess what step number two is? Step number one is create. Step number two is implement. Some people are really, really great at making lists and thinking about how they're going to do things. I call that fixing to get ready to get started. I used to live in Virginia, so I used to, uh, I still have a little bit of that Southern in me. We call it fixing to get ready to get started. <laughs> and then they never actually get started. They never implement whatever it is that they want to do. Really important. Step number two is to implement your system. Step number three is to test the system. How did it work? How's that going? Tonight we're going to talk about sales systems. And that's a really important thing to test. How did that sales process go? 
How was the sale? Did we make all the money that we wanted to? Did we sell the product that we wanted to? Uh, did we get as much of a response as we were hoping for? Yes or no? How can we do it better? How can we do it better is a question that you and your team should always be asking yourself. Because let's face it, if we get it perfect, we've got nothing else to work for. So we're always striving to improve whatever it is that we're doing. My sincere wishes for each and every one of you that you are not doing the exact same thing one year from now that you're doing today. You should be a heck of a lot better, more improved, and uh, more fulfilled, and doing things better, smarter, faster, and more successful all the time. So how can this be improved is a great question to ask yourself. So step one, create. Step two, implement. Step three, test it. Is it working? And step four is make your improvements. Every single time I have an event or um, do any kind of speaking engagement, do anything that I do to write, even doing my consulting, how could that have been better? So we make improvements constantly. What can we do better next time? So after you test and improve a few times, you are going to get things running pretty smoothly. So you test it, you make some improvements, you're testing it again. All right, how did that work? How can we do that better? Is there any way we can make that better? You make additional improvements, you test it again. There's only so many times that you can test and improve a system until you have it running pretty smoothly. When you have it running pretty smoothly, then you get to delegate it. That's how you get to do bigger and better things, is when you delegate the systematized projects that you have in your business. So you test, improve, automate. Now automation is a whole other thing. There are some glitches that come in automation um, and, and uh, delegating. So, so, oh, so sorry, I skipped one there. So improve and then you automate it. So you get it to where it's going on its own. Automation has its own sort of challenges. And you, usually automation has to do with technology. And you work out the glitches. And then you delegate. And delegation can have its issues. But you keep on working it through and you keep on improving. And ultimately when you delegate something, then you get to take on something newer, bigger, better, more powerful. Okay? So create, implement, test improve, automate, improve, and then delegate. That's how you can systemize everything in your business and your life. All right, one thing that I want to give you as a tip is to schedule your system reviews into your calendar. So whatever system that it is that you're automating, let's say you're going to, today you're gonna to work on implementing or improving an accounting system, you're gonna start that tomorrow. So start it tomorrow, put a little note in your calendar for July. Two months from now, how's that uh, accounting system working? How's that sales system working? How's the publicity system working? Because we all get busy, and sometimes the urgent takes over the important, and we let things slip. So if you schedule systems reviews and systems updates into your ca calendar, then what will happen is that uh, you will then be able to schedule more vacations <laughs> because things will be automated and delegated and because you paid attention to them and you've been able to get rid of, uh, you know, to delegate those. Um, here's a tip that something that I did, we talked about trainings a little bit. I said, I'm not going to talk to you about trainings tonight, but I have a little tip for you. One thing that I think that a lot of us small businesses and solo professionals deal with is hiring the right people. And sometimes it gets frustrating when you have somebody who just seems like they're perfect and you've trained them and you've got them all going. And then, you know, what usually happens to me is they get a boyfriend or they get pregnant and I lose them <laughs> or they graduate from college or whatever and I lose them and I had them so perfectly trained. So what I started doing was using technology, just like the one that we're using now, I started uh, videotaping my training. Some of the very simple administrative things that I do can be taught to a lot of people. I don't need to be doing them. And uh, so I video. So one time I was training somebody and I sat her down with me and I did the training on videotape. So when that person leaves, um, I have a training taped. So I don't have to continue doing that over and over and over again. So always thinking about how can this be improved. 
So we want you to create systems for life and systems for abundance. Now here are some of the mistakes that are commonly made when it comes to systems. Don't continue putting time and energy into systems that don't work. Time and energy into systems that don't work. I learned this lesson the hard way myself a couple of years ago when I invested in a video email newsletter system. It was pretty expensive for me at the time. I think I paid $350 to set up the system. And then it was like $199 a month. And the idea was that I was spending so much time writing and typing out my email newsletters for Pittsburgh professional women. And if I could just open up my computer and hit record and do a video, uh, that would take a lot less time than what I was spending writing. And so I thought this was a great idea. Uh, the problem was, is at the time, most people's email browsers, when they opened their email, they couldn't click and watch the video. So they would have to go to a different website to watch the video. And uh, about 80% of the people, when they got to the website, they were using a different type of a browser than what this technology was built on. And I had hired a video tech to videotape me to do 20 videos. So I wound up spending more money. So I had these 20 videos recorded that I was going to set up a video email video autoresponder. So I spent even more money to get these videos recorded so that I could put them in an autoresponder. And gosh, I wanted that to work. I wanted that to work so much. And my son Brian was still living at home at the time. And he said, Mom, it's never going to work. Because what, what I would do is I would record or I, I'd either record myself like this, or I would use one of my recordings that I had had done. And I'd put it into this beautiful template. And then I would send a test email to Brian, who was in the other room, playing PlayStation. I would say, Brian, check your email. And he would check his email. He's like, Mom, it's, it's never going to work, Mom. It's never, Mom, give it up. It's never going to work. But you know, I still tried. I still tried to get that to work. I'd spent so much money and invested so much time. I was determined that that was going to work. And then after about five months, I was like, this isn't going to work. So I had to let that go. And that was a painful lesson for me. But it doesn't help you to keep putting your time, energy, and money into systems that are not going to work. So let those go. And the same thing goes with people. Don't keep putting your time, energy, and money into people that don't work. So either switch these people into different roles in your business or find a way to find them to make them happy somewhere else. So if you have an employee, staff member, volunteer, intern, vice president, whatever, that is not happy in your company, they're costing you money. They're costing you time, they're costing you productivity, they're costing you energy, and they might be costing you talent because other people might leave your company because of them. So sometimes we try really hard to avoid conflict and keep putting all of our time, attention, and money into people and things that don't work. And if you let that go, things get a lot easier. Um, another common mistake that women make when it comes to being systemized or systematized is overbooking yourself. Don't overbook yourself. You're leaders. You are a leader. You are an influential person. Um, you're a woman of great influence in your company. And if you are overbooked, you're not going to have time to lead your business, lead your company, and grow. You need to have time to lead your company, to attend trainings like this. You need to have time to be creative, and you need to have time to replenish yourself. So be careful not to overbook yourself. It's a common mistake for women leaders, and it's something that I struggle with all the time and something I really work on. So uh, don't overbook yourself. And another tip to the mistake is ignoring your systems. Don't ignore your systems. We know um, if we take the time to create and implement and improve a, sy a system or whatever it is that you're doing, we know that what you pay attention to will flourish. You know that. What you pay attention to grows. So don't ignore your systems. Things sometimes get hectic in our lives. Sometimes things happen at work and we get off track a little bit. Get back on track as soon as you can and get the, keep those systems in place so that things are always running smoothly. Because what I want for you is I want you to be able to, if you want to, run your business from the beach or run your business from the golf course or have people in place 
that can run your business while you do whatever it is that you want to, while the money is still being made and while things are automated and you get to give yourself as much TLC as you enjoy or spend as much time with your family as you enjoy. So let's get into it. The five most important systems for your business. I'll name them for you first and then I'll go into them one at a time. So the first most important system for your business is accounting. How you account for your money is the first one. The second one is your sales system. How, what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're selling, how it is that you are um, making a difference in the world, your sales system. Third is your marketing system. Fourth is your customer service system. And fifth is your publicity system. And uh, probably you would not hear this in any business school, these five systems being taught at the same time. But I'll tell you as we get into each and every one of them why I think they're so important. So number one is accounting. Um, many, many companies, big companies, when they start out, the first thing they do is they put their marketing plan in place. Sometimes accounting is the last thing that they do because the first thing they want to do is create um, a brand and create some excitement moving up to that brand. So they begin with marketing. Um, for the people in this class, however, I think it's really important that you know from the beginning how it is that you are going to take money. And so what I want you to do is I want you to make a list of all the ways that you make money in your business or all the ways that you want to make money in your business. So you begin by that listing. What, what is it that, how is it that I take money? And this is a great thing to look at, not just once a year when you do your taxes, but once a month or once a quarter at a very minimum, taking a look at how it is that you make money. Sometimes when you take looks at that, take a, a, a think about that, but you get new ideas. Well, wouldn't it be interesting if we added this new system, or I wonder what would happen if we did a package, or what would happen if we did some kind of a partnership event. A lot of things can happen when you make lists, or when you have time to be creative and put thought and leadership into your business. So number one, I want you to make a list of your, of your all the ways you make money, and then another list of your expenses. Really, really important to track your expenses. A good accountant will tell you there's two ways that you can make more money. You can raise your prices or you can decrease your expenses. Now, I'm going to tell you there's other ways that you can make more money. You can automate yourself. You can systemize yourself. There's a lot of things that you can do to make more money, but those are the two basics. Raise your prices or decrease your expenses. It's important to keep track of your expenses. And I want you all to have to pay taxes and I like it if you pay a lot of taxes I think that's great that you that you earn a lot a lot of money but hey I want you to keep your money you don't need to pay it all in taxes right uh, don't pay taxes for a tax bracket that you don't belong in because you haven't kept track of your expenses so please keep track of all of your expenses and please don't do it in a shoebox that's not the woman I want you to be and that's not the way I want you to run your business so um, why should you account for your money? Well, I think I just gave you a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, you can track your income. You can track your expenses. It's a lot easier to do your taxes when you have had some kind of a tracking system. Um, it's a lot easier to invoice your clients in a very professional way when you have a professional accounting system. I'll give you some ideas for what those could be in a moment. Um, but some other things that you may not have thought of, perhaps you want your business to become minority certified. A little certification that you can have that you're a minority business to be a minority you can be a woman you can be um, you can be in a place like a zip code uh, or an area or a region that is struggling I think they call it blighted so you don't necessarily have to be a minority to be minority certified you can be disadvantaged you can be disabled you can be a veteran you can um, you could be in a community that needs revitalization. Those are things that can have you marked um, as what's it called? Minority MW Women Minority Disadvantaged Business. So, so you could be a woman, a minority, or disadvantaged. And disadvantaged uh, has a, a lot of different categories that you can fall into. Okay. So sometimes that's a good idea for some of your business to have that certification. It opens up 
new ways of doing business with government agencies or large corporations who prefer to do business with minority businesses or some of them who are required to do business with minority businesses because of that they have government contracts. So is that a possibility for you? If you wanna become a minority certified business, they are going to ask for three years of your records of bookkeeping, okay? If you're less than three years old, still go for it uh, because you can start that paperwork up so that when you hit your three year mark, you can get certified. So another thing is if you wanna receive certain prestigious awards, um, Forbes Leadership does business awards, there is, and I should have written these down so I could name them for you. Um, Ernst, Ernst and Young does an entrepreneur entrepreneur of the year award. Certain business journals and newspapers do uh, business awards of people. Now, your chambers of commerce also do awards, and some of your women's organizations or your professional organizations also do. But these bigger ones, the Ernst and Young, the Forbes Foundation, the Forbes Leadership Foundation, these guys. They want to see your records. They don't just give you an award because somebody nominated you and said you were a really, really nice person doing really, really important things. Uh, they want to see the facts. And uh, so you'll need to have those for those sorts of things. And I'll tell you, having an Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award really looks nice, really is a great way to to position yourself and help you stand out among your, from your competition. Uh, another reason it's good to have a system for accounting is so that you can get loans and credits and buy things because of your business or buy things for your business and not buy them personally. And uh, that was something that was really rewarding for me last April when I bought a company car, when my company bought a company car and it was actually not very difficult at all. I have been using QuickBooks for a couple of years. I think this might be my fifth year using QuickBooks. So I had four years of records. I think they only asked for two. Um, I decided that I wanted to get a nice car, one that didn't have hockey sticks and soccer shoes and socks and baseballs <laughs> and those kind of things in them. I wanted to get myself a nice little cute little zippy car. And I, um, called up my credit union and I said, what do you need? And they asked for either two or three years of records. And I was able to email that over, get approved for a certain amount and go buy my car. That was excellent. And that helps a lot with taxes too. I'll tell you that really made a difference in my taxes this year because the business owns that car and I got to write off a lot more of my car on my taxes than I did in years past. So that was really excellent. So Having accounting helps you to purchase things, to have business credit, also to keep more of your money because that, that's really important too. Oh, what about if you ever want to sell your business? Somebody's going to sell, buy the business from you. They want some kind of a track record of what the income is or has been. <clears throat> so that's pretty good. So that is uh, the first system for your business, accounting. Now, I mentioned before that the, the accounting system that I use is QuickBooks Online. I've been using QuickBooks for many, many years. It was recommended to me by my colleagues and other people that I worked with. And years ago, I would go to Best Buy and buy a disk of QuickBooks and then load it up onto your computer. And then every year you had to invest in whatever the updates were. And no, I don't think you can buy the disks anymore. Uh, you can buy the QuickBooks system. But somebody like me doesn't need that. I have no employees. Um, I have five or six people that I pay um, part-time as 1099 employees, but I don't have anybody that works for me full-time. I have very few expenses. Uh, and so I don't need a whole big system. I use their online program. It costs about $10 a month. It's always the most updated, and it gives me a really professional image. Uh, Lee Drozak, who is a part of this success circle. I don't know if she's here with us live tonight. Um, she's my web uh, designer. Lee, if you don't know Lee, she is, uh, they call her the WordPress Adventure Guide. And what she really specializes in is website makeovers. And so she helps me with the Pittsburgh Professional Women website and my own personal website. And also she does a lot of things for my clients. And I get a really nice invoice from her the first of every month. And it comes through something called Fresh Books. F-R-E-S-H books.com. Uh, on our Facebook group, why don't you share what systems you use? I'm sure there's other systems 
out there that are just as good or maybe even better. And I've been seeing these ads. Um, oh, I'll tell you, there's one that I want to tell you about in my own personal mastermind group. There's a woman from central Pennsylvania that has a bookkeeping accounting system that she does for people who really don't want to be technical at all and they don't want to enter things online and she does that for them and it's very affordable so I'll share that link in our Facebook group because I can't recall what the name of her company is but I was really impressed with it and so whatever systems that work for you please share that with the rest of the group I'd like to know too so system one is accounting do you have an accounting system? Is there anything that you need to do to improve your accounting system? One thing I'd like to encourage you to do is send an invoice to yourself and see how it appears to your clients. And a lot of times there's some very subtle changes there that we can improve, all right? So that's system number one. System number two is sales. And sales is how do you get people to give you money? What product or service allows you to make the most money? And what would you like to sell that you're not selling now? Sales is really important for your success. If you have a lot of items that you sell, pick the items or think about the items that you would like to sell more of or something that you would like to sell starting this year. So when you're thinking about this, um, maybe creating a sales system and you might feel overwhelmed because you have so many different things that you can sell or ways that you can do it, just think about one to start your first system. Just think about one. And I like you to think about the one that makes you the most profit. So years ago, I had a client who had an audio recording studio. It's actually where I went in 2009 and 2010 to record my audio books and audio workshops. It was in Shadyside and I went down to this really cool little studio and they put me in a sound box with headsets on and I read my books and read my programs and they were recorded. And um, yeah, they loved it. It was really cute because I was doing this client attraction recording and other things like that. And other people from the sound studio would come in and listen to my class. And then afterwards I would come out and they'd have all these questions for me. It was really fun. But one of the questions that the audio engineer had for me, he said, Beth, how can I get more video clients? Because in 2009, of course, video was still really new. And he said, you know, I try, I get $1,000 a day for a video client and I'm only getting $75 an hour for an audio client. So I want more video. So I was thinking, well, gee, you know, video is really hot. It's up and coming. It's what you need. So I sort of agreed with him, but we sat down and we started making that list. I said, well, hold on a second. You charge $1,000 for video, but how much does video cost you? And when we made the list of how much he was putting out for video because he had to rent equipment and he had to hire people to do a video shoot, turned out that his audio programs were a lot more profitable than his video programs because he owned his equipment. He didn't have to rent it. He didn't have to use any other talent. So the real strategy for him was to get more audio clients or make enough money that he could buy his own video. So sometimes the most expensive product isn't the most profitable product. That's something that you want to look at in your sales system. Now, if you don't like the word sales, just change the word to service. What's your service system? A lot of people think that sales is icky. Sales is important. And a lot of people fail because they don't have a sales system. Now I think for us in this success circle, we don't wanna be salesy. We wanna be coming from a place of service. And so that goes back to when we were together at our retreat and we talked about the benefits of working with you. So you don't sell somebody something based on the name of the product, you sell them a solution. Okay, so don't let that get feel icky to you. If you don't like the word sales, change it to solutions or change it to um, what I forget what I just said, service, okay? And uh, think about that. Now here's what I want you to pay attention to in your sales system. And this is something that I see happening in almost every company and organization. And that is the lost sales. The people who slip through the cracks. They slip through the cracks because we don't have a system. These are people who email you or call you 
and ask you a question about your product and you don't have a way to get back to them or you're too busy to get back to them or you don't have somebody in your organization assigned to get back to them and when you drop the ball so you have what what I see a lot of my clients having is a lot of potential money on the table that they don't take advantage of because they don't have a system so let's make a system so what happens when we have somebody that just sends us a website form they go to our website and they fill out a form I'd like more information on blank all right what do we do with that person where do we put their name are you like me like do you put them on a little sticky note to remind you to call up or do you have a at some kind of technology automated reminders in place so that that person never falls through the cracks I think that's really important now do I think it has to be technology absolutely not one of my favorite friends um, she lives in San Francisco now and she is a really a top recruiter and sales director with Mary Kay cosmetics this woman is making I don't know fifteen sixteen thousand dollars a month because she has so many people in her under Mary Kay. How do you get to that level? And you know, anytime I ever see her, she's going out to lunch, she's speaking at an event, she's having a great time. How do you do that? Her system is so simple, it's just crazy. She, she buys these, um, she buys loose leaf, I think they're called loose leaf notebooks, you know the kind that have the wire around the end of them? So, so I am left-handed, so I never use them because I can't write on them because they have those coils on them. She loves those things. And what she does is she has, this is her system for, customer, for sales and customer service. When she meets somebody at a networking event, she takes their business card and she staples it or tapes it to the top of a piece of loose leaf paper. Okay, if they don't have a business card, she just hand writes their information in. And so it's something like, I met um, Kim Belsterling at the Success Circle Retreat and Kim asked me to get back to her on consulting. So this notebook then is really good for those of us who are women on the run, who we're not always sitting at a desk. So when she wants to sit down and make her follow-up calls, which she has scheduled into her computer for certain days of the week, she opens up her loose leaf notebook. Well, it's been a week since I met Kim, let me give her a call. So she picks up the phone and gives Kim a call, talks to Kim or leaves her message and writes it down in her system, turns the page. She keeps people's business card in that loose leaf notebook until they either join her team or become a customer. And at that point, then they get entered into her database. See, she's in a business where she meets so many people, it just doesn't make sense to add every person that she meets into her database. She pays somebody to maintain her database. It's not, a, it's not necessary for them to go into a, her database until they either become one of her team members or become a customer. And at that point, they go into a different system to one of her team members. So it doesn't have to be a complicated system. It just has to be structured and organized, okay? So what I want you to do is go back to your accounting lists, all the ways that you can make money, and pick one of those ways and put this together a system. And make sure that you have a system in place that keeps you from losing people or losing track of people so that they become a customer and then you go to their customer service, they go into your customer service program, but first, they become a customer. So make sure we don't lose anybody in the cracks. There's a lot of leverage to the people that are just sort of, some people call them low hanging fruit. They're just sort of hanging around waiting to do business with you. You just have to return their call or get back to them and, and close that gap, okay? So that's number two is your sales system. Now number three is your marketing system. And as I said before, a lot of the larger companies put their marketing first, but I don't think that's appropriate for businesses like us. Uh, I have seen people create very intensive marketing plans and when they unleash the marketing plan, they find out it's really not a product or service that everybody wants. I'd rather have you out there selling first and finding out what solutions people need or what's really resonating with them before you put together your marketing system, okay? So today, I want you to think about three ways that you can market your business. We were together at our retreat, I was telling you about how large companies market their businesses in five ways. And some of them, like Pepsi-Cola or Lexus or Volvo or the large banks, I mean, they have, they have a full marketing department. 
that is divided between marketing, advertising, and public relations. And they have six or seven people in each of those departments working 40 hours a week on marketing. That's how important marketing is, okay? You and I don't have those resources, but even companies that have those resources are marketing their business in five ways. So I'm gonna suggest that you market your business in three to five ways and do it consistently and do it effectively. And that way you're not scattered all over the place. Now when somebody comes to me to do a marketing consult to create a marketing plan for their business in a one-on-one -on -one session that I only do that kind of a session in person, I ask them to bring with them, bring to me a list of all the ways that they're marketing their business. It's really interesting. I, I get one of two when I'm doing this. Somebody will have three or four ways of marketing their business. Some people only have one way of marketing their business. But a lot of the majority of the women I work with come in with a list front and back, 17, 18, 23 ways. And they're really proud of that list. And I'm like, wait a second. Um, you really want to be an interior designer. So how in the world are you doing any interior designing when you're doing all this? How do you possibly have time for that, right? So five, three to five ways to market your business consistently. So let me throw off the top of my head. We're not talking about advertising here. Uh, marketing is how you tell people about your business. Advertising is when you pay somebody to tell people about your business. And marketing, or I mean, public relations is when the media tells people about your business, but they all fall under the marketing umbrella, okay? So today, under the marketing umbrella that we're on is how are you going to tell people about your business? So what do we have? For many of you, um, networking, your website, your social media, speaking, you know how much I love speaking, and we talked about that in our class last week, how to speak to grow your business. If you're somebody that enjoys speaking, that's a great way to position yourself as an expert and serve as a marketing tool at the same time. So I really like that one. Writing, blogging, um, let's see, what else? Hosting events, hosting awards events, or hosting other events, which is what our topic is going to be on Friday. And um, your website, I think I might have said your website. Let me know how you market your business and what works for you and what doesn't. But what I wanna encourage you to do is pick three ways that you're going to market and decide when you're going to implement them. Now, some people will say to me, well, I have a website so I can check that off my list. So your website only is a marketing tool if it's bringing you business. If it's not bringing you business, then that's something that you need to update improve, polish, whatever you want to call it. But I want your website to be making you money. I want that to be bringing you business. When I work with you on your website, my goal is that when they come to your website, by the time they start reading the second paragraph of your web copy, they should be thinking to themselves, oh my gosh, how did she know? This is, this is the exact person I need to solve my problem. That's the way your website should be working for you. People should come to your website and see what you have to offer and say, holy cow, I've been looking for this woman my whole life. She's gonna fix everything. How can I give her money? <laughs> That's what I want people to do when they come to your website. So if your website doesn't look like that, then it needs some polishing. And um, I don't think that social media is a marketing tool. I think that social media is a, I think that social media is a bonus because we no longer have to buy ads in the yellow pages or ads in the newspaper. We can get to the general public now for free on social media. But the purpose of social media, in my opinion, is to get people back to your website and to be social. So I don't really think it substitutes for its own, you know, quote unquote, marketing strategy, unless you're a company like Sheets or Coca-Cola or something like that. But um, I think that maybe you could have a marketing plan that would say perhaps online and online marketing would cover your website and social media so that they sort of work in tangent to get back to your business. I'll tell you one thing that I do that works for me really well. It, and I still think it's one of the best ways that you can market your business. And that is the email newsletter. Um, you know, when somebody gives you their email address, that's a, that's a privilege nowadays. 
And not everybody gets to get that information. And so if you have the privilege of getting into somebody's ebook e inbox, then, um, then I think that's a, a really great tool. Now, people don't read every email as they used to back in the old days when we were excited to get email, but it's still a really powerful way and it's something that you should put some time and attention into. And another thing that I think is a great marketing tool, tremendously underused, is the autoresponder. An autoresponder. And an autoresponder is, is when people get a series of either letters in the mail or emails or videos or audios or tweets, something that people get automatically. It's something that you write or create one time and people get them in a series. We, we will talk about in this class more. Um, that's a great way to build a relationship with somebody is through an autoresponder series very, very underused, and I think it's something every I think it's something all of you should use. Now I want to spend a little extra time here tonight in marketing and tell you about two experiences that I had over the weekend that I thought were really interesting. And it's a big mistake that people make in marketing. I went to an open house, uh, a businesswoman who's been in business for a long time and doing business from her home or from the offices of her clients. And she finally rented an office and I'm so pleased for her and so happy. And I went to celebrate her open house with her yesterday. And um, when I walked in, it was a little tense. It wasn't really a celebration atmosphere. And so uh, I took her aside and I said, what's going on? And she said, nobody's buying anything. Nobody's bought anything yet today. <laughs> She's a service professional. She has some products that she has for sale, but mainly she gets paid for her time. And what happens is sometimes we forget the purpose. And where she is right now is she's looking at how much money she spends, putting down a security deposit, first and month, last month's rent, getting office furniture, installing internet and a phone line. That stuff is pricey, it's expensive, it's stressful, I understand that. Um, you have to trust the universe though, to bring all that back to you and more. And what happened was that she thought she was gonna sell her book or pre-sell some packages, and people did not come there to buy, they came to celebrate. And you have to remember that. Now's not necessarily the time to be selling. Today's the time to celebrate. And if you get some sales, that's a bonus. But what the open house is really scheduled to do, number one, is to get some media attention and some community attention. And I was really happy as I was sitting there listening. Uh, she's in a, an office building, I think has seven floors. We were there on a Sunday. People came in that worked in that building. They came in on a Sunday just to meet her. She had four people in the 20 minutes that I was there come in and say, we work upstairs, we saw your sign. So I had had her create a sign that said, open house Sunday. Well, you know, and she put it by the mailboxes where everybody signs in. That worked. So there she met four people that are in her building that wanted to meet her so much that they came on a Sunday. To me, that was a huge win. So an open house is not a place to do sales. Any sales that happen in an open house are a bonus. And then the second thing that happened to me this weekend actually also happened yesterday. I came home and I had a video message from one of my former clients. I haven't worked with her for a couple of years, but I followed her career and she's starting something new. And so she did a video message and one of the mistakes that she made in her video message is it was over six minutes long. So if you're going to use video to market your business, make sure your video is less than two minutes long because we don't like to watch seven minute videos, do we? You don't like to watch seven minute videos. You've been here with me for 45 minutes. You're probably like, when can I leave, right? So videos are really powerful, but videos need to be short. And if you don't believe me, go and watch some of those commercials. Some of my favorite commercials, uh, there's a commercial that was on the Super Bowl this year about um, water. Uh, it was... I'll post it for you later. Um, but it was about water. It wasn't even a water company that did it, but it showed how saving water can make a difference in the world. Another one of my favorite co TV commercials is the one, it's called Sorry, or it's called Don't Be Sorry by Pantene. It's amazing to me. Oh, here's another one I love. Have you ever seen that TV commercial? I think it's State Farm, where the guy goes, um, I'm never getting married. Um, we're never moving to the suburbs. I'm never having a baby, right? Have you ever seen that commercial? 
And it's amazing the message that they get through in 30 seconds. So you don't need, to, the first mistake that she made <laughs> was she took way too long. The second mistake is through her whole six and a half minutes, she talked about herself. So hi everybody, it's me, hi. That was what her video looked like. <laughs> and then it said, hey, I'm starting something new in my business and I really would appreciate your help and here's how you can help me. And this is what I'm doing and I'm going to be doing it on this day and I'm gonna be doing it beginning in May and I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that and I need you and I need you and if you don't understand how to do this, then what you really need to do is get a teenager to help you because I need your help. And I was like, well, seriously, what's in it for me? So I thought, so how she could have marketed herself way better is, hey guys, guess what? I have something brand new launching in May and wait till you hear it. When you visit this or listen to this or watch this, this is what it's gonna do for you. So here's what I'd love. If you could help me out, I would so appreciate it. On May 15th, when I have my launch, watch for this email to come out. And when you get it, please click share like. And as a special thank you, I'm going to send you blah, 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 blah. So you see how that's a win-win. Talk about the customer and talk about the client and talk about what they're going to get out of something. That's a, the correct way to market something. All right, so my next system for you, number four, is customer service. And um, customer service, again, is one of those systems that for most people, it tends to be reactive. Somebody has a complaint, okay, we're gonna deal with that. And we sort of drop everything and deal with it right now. If you have a system of how something is handled, then you don't get surprised or thrown off when you have a customer service issue. And it's something you train your people to do. And that way, 100% of the time, situations are handled so that everybody winds up happy. They wind up happy because you fix their problem and you wind up happy because you don't lose them as a customer, okay? Um, too many people do not implement a customer service system until somebody goes on their Facebook page or their Google page and says something ugly about them. And that's when they decide to finally implement something and that is way too late. So, um, for some of you, customer service may not be the biggest priority, but it is something uh, that I want you to think about because it's a lot of work to get a new client, and I would rather you keep that client over and over and over again, having them buy from you, or uh, let's say if you only have one thing. I know some of you in this particular class, we have a couple of attorneys, and we have a couple of people in real estate, and I understand that a lawyer and a realtor, sometimes people don't use you really often, right? Um, maybe somebody buys a house two or three times in their life, and if you are a family attorney, how many times do people get married and divorced and make a will? <laughs> so, the, so what else can we do to keep them as your customer or to keep them, um, it, it, for both of you, for my attorneys and my realtors, one of the most important things for marketing your business, I didn't say this before, is referrals. Referrals are a huge way. An excellent customer service, in your case, client appreciation events. So if, if one of your marketing tools is a client appreciation event, and that client did a will with you seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years ago, but you invite them to your client appreciation event every year, what's gonna happen is they're going to send you, you know, their mother, father, brother, sister, son, daughter, cousin, aunt, uncle as a client referral because you've given excellent customer service. So going back one step to marketing, put out client appreciation events. I think that's a great marketing tool. Okay, the last system is publicity. Publicity is not a required system for any business. In fact, you can walk out your door right now. Uh, you can go onto Google right now and you can look at a list of businesses or you can see up the street a list of businesses, a whole bunch of people that have never been on TV, they've never been in the newspaper, they've never been on the radio, and they're doing just fine, okay? So you don't need to have publicity to be successful in your business. But if you get some publicity exposure, 
You will absolutely stand out from your competition. You'll be able to charge more. You're going to leverage yourself as a leader and authority and expert. And what I don't want you to do in publicity is I don't want you to be reactive. Oh, hi, this is CNN calling. We're wondering if you can do an interview. Uh, okay. And you drop everything and you, you spend three days working on the CNN interview. I'd rather you be like, sure. Um, let me send you my photo and my bio. What information do you need? Let's do an appointment and it to be a non-stressful thing. That then you spend your time leveraging it, not preparing for it. Most people handle all of these issues, accounting, sales, customer service, marketing, and publicity in a reactive mode. And that's not the mode of abundance. So how long does it take to put together a publicity plan? You know, a day. You can spend two hours on a Friday afternoon or a Monday morning for about four or five weeks, and you can have a system put together. You can block out a day to do it, or you can come and see me. We can do a strategy session, or if you guys want to do another retreat, maybe we can do a Friday, Saturday, create a publicity plan for your business system. Um, it's not required, but it's very important. And if you want more information on um, how to create a publicity plan for your business, it's I don't believe it's one we're doing in this class, but it is one that I have recorded, and I'll let you know where you can find that. So there you go, the five most important systems for your business, accounting, sales, marketing, customer service, and publicity. And it's just a few minutes before the hour, so let me go over here and see who's with us and ask you guys, Tiffany's with us, Deborah Myers is here, Aurora's here, hi Aurora. And is Kimberly still here? I think Kim Besterling's on the call. And does anybody have any questions for me? Typically, I know after listening to me talk for an hour, you guys are just like, oh, please, I need a break. Um, but I want to remind you, if you have any questions, you can type them in here. Let me look over here into my Q&A. I don't have anything posted there. If you have any ideas, any aha moments, any inspiration that you got tonight, please share that. And remember, through the week, as you process this information and you think about it, you are going to have questions come up. So I want to tell you that if you're thinking of a question, uh, chances are somebody else is too. So don't hesitate to ask. Either come on the class on Friday mornings 15 minutes early. I'm here 15 minutes early, and I'm here just for that purpose, to strategize with you and work you through whatever comes up as you're implementing these strategies. Um, and or use our Facebook group. Some of you have been emailing me privately. Um, Beth, what do I do when this comes up? Or how can you help me walk through this? Well, I don't mind doing that. Um, I, this is a group program. And I'd love for you to ask your questions with the group. Because as I said, chances are if you're thinking of it, they probably are too. And um, I would love to answer your, your questions to the group so that everybody can benefit. So let's see what we have over here. I think the webinar went very smoothly today. I think the third time's a charm, right? Hopefully everybody's been able to hear me and see me. Uh, some of you last week were messaging me that you were having difficulty with, you know, um, interruptions in the sound and the sound cutting off. And sometimes my talking, uh, my voice was moving, but the sound was coming later. And what I learned was that that happens when you have too many things uh, running on your computer at one time. So if you have a lot of web pages open or if you have a lot of applications open, that will slow down the speed. And also, if you do have a very slow modem connection, you want to be on a hard wire instead of a, a Wi-Fi connection. I have Verizon, and it's pretty fast. And so I'm using a Wi-Fi connection, and I, I've been doing really great. So this one seemed to go smoothly. Love to know your feedback on that. And I will... Um, get this recording out to you. I see a question in our box. Let's see what we have here. Deborah Myers says, can you recommend someone to do social media for marketing? So Deborah, that is a billion dollar question. Here's the thing. I get that question a lot and I get this question and sometimes I get the question, I'd like an intern. And a lot of times people want to hire interns for marketing, publicity, and accounting. And social media is a form of marketing. So those are the three areas that I say you really do not want to be hiring an intern 
or subletting that information out to anyone until you have a system for it. See, Deborah, your social media is your image to the world. And I really believe that that should be done for you, by you, should be done by you. And it needs to be authentic. Um, I can tell you lots and lots of stories about how disasters have happened by hiring somebody to do social media. It's expensive. Um, I haven't had anybody that has hired a social media agency that has been happy with it or gotten any kind of great results from it. If any of the rest of you have any tips on that or ideas on that, feel free to share that in our Facebook group or share it here live tonight. So um, I recommend that you do that yourself and that you get a system and get it automated before you delegate that out. And that the person who you have doing your social media has to be really understanding of your business. Um, now, one of my clients, Elizabeth Cessna, does have a man. His name is Dan. I don't remember his last name, but I can find that for you. If you ping me in the Facebook group and say social media, um, I'll, I'll get that information for you and send it. Um, but I know social media is a challenge for this group in particular. And so I was talking with Kim before we started the recording about maybe getting together socially and doing a social media lesson so you can do that yourself. So that might not have been the answer you were hoping for, but you know, I'll always be really honest with you. So Deborah's asking me, can you recommend to do a webinar for a full, oh, for a standing up shot? Okay, so what, yeah, I'm not gonna stand up right now because then I would have to move this back and you'd see my messy desk. <laughs> um, what you can do is it all has to do with the camera. So Deborah wants to know, uh, she wants to share exercises via a webinar. So there's something you can do called live streaming. And my coach, Christine Kane in Asheville, North Carolina, she does a lot of live streams and she has a camera, not the internet camera, not the computer camera, but she has an actual camera that's way back. So I don't know if that would work on a webinar. You'd have to play around with it. Now this zoominternet.net offers a free trial. Um, so you could do a free trial and what you want to do is just position the camera far enough away so that you can stand. Now the problem that you'll come in with is the microphone won't pick up. So you'll have to have a clip on microphone tied in. Um, so yeah, that's something you could do. Also, Deborah, you might want to check out biz TV shows. Look at pittsburghbiztvshows.com and that's not a webinar, but it's short videos. And that might be something that would, would work for you as well. Thanks for asking questions, I love that. Okay, all righty, any other questions? Thank you for asking them. It's always good to have some feedback and some interaction. It's so funny because I'm just looking at you and I mean, I'm just looking at me and I'm not able to see you as I am in the room, so okay. Awesome. So um, you guys have a great night and I will see you on Friday. Okay. And, um, and if you have any questions, again, anything that you want to share, any aha movements, any inspiration, uh, I would love to know that in our Facebook group and please share <clears throat> whatever system you are going to implement or improve. Let me know what that is. Let's 